Medusa. Recognized by her snake-laden hair and petrifying gaze, is arguably the most iconic figure in Greek mythology, but there's so much more to her. For a start, the story you've seen in movies is only one small part of her complex history. Some say she was a woman turned into a monster, some say she was born a mythical creature, and some only saw her as a symbol. By the end of this video, you'll discover the rich tapestry of the mythological story that is Medusa. While Gorgon is a term often used interchangeably with Medusa, its origins trace back much further, possibly to 6000 BC. Over millennia, the portrayal of these beings has undergone significant evolution. The name Gorgon derives from the ancient Greek word Gorgos, which means grim or dreadful. Before the Gorgon became widely recognized as we know it today, there were other figures in Greek mythology that bore resemblances to this concept. One such example is the Erinyes, also known as the Furies. These were winged avengers tasked with punishing those who committed grave sins. Their depictions often included serpents wrapped around their bodies, suggesting that they might have been early representations of the Gorgons. As Greek mythology evolved, new characters associated with the Gorgon narrative were introduced. Notable figures include the Elder Gorgon, who some myths suggest might be Medusa's father, and there was Gorgo, the daughter of the Titan Helios. These early Gorgons were distinct in appearance, often characterized by features like beards, tusks, and curly hair. This depiction is quite different from the later, more familiar portrayal of Gorgons as snake-haired women. In the 8th century BC, literature became a driving force in molding the Gorgon narrative, with Medusa taking center stage. Homer's epics, the Iliad and the Odyssey, introduced the Gorgon as a formidable entity, her snake-covered head and stone-inducing stare becoming the stuff of legends. Interestingly, Homer's epics wrote about there only being a single Gorgon, Medusa. Another Greek poet, Hesiod, wrote the Theogony, a poetic account of the origins and genealogies of the Greek gods. In the Theogony, Hesiod brought forth the three Gorgon sisters, Stheno, Euryale, and Medusa. Among them, Medusa stood out as the sole mortal, though the nature of her mortality remains a subject of debate. Was she mortal in her appearance, contrasting her monstrous siblings, or was she mortal in her susceptibility to age and death? By 490 BC, the narrative takes another turn. The poet Pindarus paints a picture of a fair-cheeked Medusa, signaling a shift in her portrayal. No longer just a fearsome creature, Medusa's duality emerges, embodying both beauty and terror. This evolution emphasizes not just her serpentine locks, but also her captivating gaze, a look that could petrify on sight. Metamorphoses, written by the Roman poet Ovid in the 8th century AD, offers perhaps the most poignant and debated version of Medusa's tale, one that has both enchanted but also sparked debate for centuries. Ovid's approach to mythology is distinct in three primary ways. He adds depth and emotion to myths, often dramatizing them. He isn't afraid to cast the gods in a less than favorable light, exposing their flaws, and being Roman, his perspective sometimes veers from traditional Greek interpretations. In Ovid's narrative, Medusa is portrayed not as a born monster, but as a human maiden. Medusa was originally a beautiful maiden known for her lovely hair. She served as a priestess in the temple of Athena, the virgin goddess of wisdom and warfare. However, Poseidon, the god of the sea, became infatuated with Medusa and pursued her. Despite her attempts to escape him, Poseidon caught her in Athena's temple. Athena, upon discovering the desecration of her temple, was enraged. Instead of punishing Poseidon, she directed her wrath towards Medusa. As a punishment, Athena transformed Medusa's beautiful hair into a mass of writhing snakes, turning her into a gorgon. From that point on, anyone who looked directly at Medusa would be turned to stone. This depiction of Athena, acting out of what seems like jealousy rather than justice, challenges the conventional image of the wise and righteous goddess. 
The narrative of Medusa, especially as depicted by Ovid, has been dissected and interpreted in countless ways, each revealing different facets of her character and the societal norms that influenced her story's evolution. In reaction to Ovid's portrayal of Athena's wrathful response, later Greek adaptations sought to cast Athena in a more compassionate light. In these retellings, Athena's transformation of Medusa serves not as punishment, but as a protective measure. By making Medusa a Gorgon, Athena ensures that no man could ever harm her again, granting her a form that commands respect and fear. Another perspective argues that Medusa's transformation was a consequence of her own pride. By daring to equate her beauty with that of the gods, she invoked their anger. This viewpoint aligns with numerous Greek myths where hubris or excessive pride incurs divine retribution. Beyond her origin story, Medusa's symbolic legacy is vast. Her visage was painted on protective shelters for women, and her role post-death, where her severed head aids Perseus in defeating the sea monster Cetus, further amplifies her influence. Athena's choice to feature Medusa's head on her shield, the Aegis, cements Medusa's standing as both a protective emblem and a symbol of formidable power. Medusa's character is not confined to a singular narrative or trait. She represents a spectrum of roles, from victim to monster, from maiden to protector, and from a symbol of hope to a beacon of resilience. Her multifaceted nature and the emotions she evokes make her one of the most compelling figures in Greek mythology. Medusa's tale, rich in symbolism and interpretations, has transcended its ancient Greek roots to resonate deeply in contemporary culture, reflecting various themes and eliciting diverse emotions. Over time, Medusa's image underwent a remarkable transformation. Once feared for her monstrous appearance and her ability to petrify with a mere glance, she later evolved into a symbol of protection. Her once terrifying face became a beacon of safety, prominently featured on women's shelters and protective amulets known as the Gorgoneion, which were believed to ward off malevolent spirits. The Gorgoneion, a motif that gained immense popularity in ancient Greece and Rome, continues to be a cherished symbol of protection today, finding its place in jewelry, home decor, and various artifacts. In recent years, Medusa has been championed by some feminist movements as a symbol of female empowerment. Her ability to paralyze men with her gaze is interpreted as a potent metaphor for challenging patriarchal norms and asserting female strength. Sigmund Freud, the pioneer of psychoanalysis, provided a unique interpretation of the Medusa myth. He theorized that the Medusa head symbolized a man's deep-seated fear of emasculation. According to Freud, the serpents in Medusa's hair were symbolic of the male organ, and her petrifying gaze was a metaphor for male impotence. Contemporary films such as Clash of the Titans and Percy Jackson and the Olympians showcase Medusa in diverse roles, ranging from a formidable foe to a tragic heroine. While these adaptations might deviate from classical interpretations, they introduce Medusa to newer audiences, ensuring her legacy remains vibrant and relevant. Medusa's enduring appeal is a testament to her multifaceted nature. She is not just a character from ancient Greek mythology, but a symbol that has evolved and adapted to reflect the values, fears, and aspirations of different eras. As society continues to evolve, so too does the narrative of Medusa. She serves as a reminder that stories, no matter how ancient, can be reinterpreted and reshaped to reflect contemporary values and beliefs. Medusa's story is not just a tale from Greek mythology, but a reflection of the human experience, highlighting the complexities of identity, power, and transformation. What do you think of Medusa? Do you see her as a monster or a symbol of female empowerment? Let me know in the comments. If you don't want to miss the next installment of Mythology, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications.